G'day guys, Doss here, and thanks for joining me. Today we're going on another little fishing adventure, this time in the Calliope River in Gladstone. I'm currently just leaving the picnic area at Devil's Elbow, and if you don't know where that is, maybe check out some of the other videos, or have a scroll around on Google Maps. That's an excellent way to find some good fishing spots. And the spot I want to check out today, is one of those spots. But first, we need to go and catch some bait, because you can't throw a net at Devil's Elbow, it's just too rocky. But luckily, not too far west of here, there's a big sandbank right on the edge of the river that you can drive out onto. So we're going to head up there and try and catch some bait. But first, it's very steep decline. Good morning. So, we've had a bit of an incident here. I was flying the drone, I set it up in a shot and then I put it down and I drive because I'm a solo act. There's not much more you can do. So I put it down, try to do this last big decline down onto the floodplain. The controller slipped off the seat down onto the floor, disconnected the drone and it's crashed somewhere up in the scrub here. So before we try and catch any bait, even before we catch a fish, we've got to go and see if we can find this drone. Oh. All right, let's get to it. It's a good little feature on the DJI's. You can turn on Find My Drone and they beep and flash lights. So it's awesome we found it. Doesn't look like it's got too much damage. I turn this beeping off. We're gonna get out here and catch some bait. Let's get into it. Just in case you're wondering what the decline's like, down onto the floodplain, there she is. She's pretty steep. I'll have a look at it when we go back up. Ah, it's relatively pain free this time. I don't know if you've seen the video, the last time I had one of these DJI's, she ended up in the Calliope. Just had a bit of a glitch out and, uh, yeah, just flew herself straight into the water. Not far to go now. Oh, we've been here before. Elbow's just up there. So you can only go up there for a fish. The tide's a lot higher than I thought it was gonna be this morning. Obviously, all this was underwater on the night tide. But uh, the day tides are a fair bit smaller at the moment. So we're gonna try and get some bait and then head back up near the elbow. There's a little track there I've been wanting to check out. But the water might be too high to access it. But we'll go and check it out anyway. First, we've gotta catch some bait. So let's do that. Oh, look at that. A bit on the small side, but that's heaps of mullet. That's more than enough we need for today. We can have a couple more casts if we can get a few bigger ones. But that's absolutely awesome to just come out and get 20 or so potties in the first cast. Cracking start to the day after that drone went down. Things are turning around for us. Catching all this bait in my first cast really makes me think today's going to be the day where we get a cracking fish. Right, that's an awesome effort. They've definitely spooked after that first cast. I did see the school again, but they're out in deeper water. I did manage to get a few larger ones, but probably end up with 25 to 30 little potties in here, all around the two to three inches long. So we're going to drive up to the rock and send some of these out under floats and hope for the best. I'll flick a few lures, but that's it's an awesome start to the day, minus the drone crash. Get a skip bait like that, oh, it's been a while. Righto, let's pack this up, and let's get back in the ute and head back up that power line track 
and see if we can get out and get over to the rock. Maybe get down this other little secret track I think I found. Right, oh, no, let's do it. Come on. It doesn't show up well on camera, but this thing is super steep. I'm getting a little bit of wheel spin here, but it looks like we're gonna make it. I'm sure you guys can see why we lost the drone uh, and why the controller slid off the seat. That is some steep country. We had a little bit of wheel spin coming up, but we managed to hold it and uh, get to the top without too much incident. I've never had too much trouble coming up there, touch wood, but uh, I can certainly see how you might run into some. Right, uh, let's get back to that picnic area and it's on foot from there. I'll see you when we get there. Is this the track? I'm not sure if this is the one I've seen on the way in. And you definitely couldn't be driving it, but it does appear to go where I want to and above the high water line. So we've got all the gear on and we're tracking through this long grass, hopefully to get to a spot that doesn't get fished very much, or well, not by land anyway. Hopefully me little potty mullet make it. <laughs> I was under the impression that this was a trail put in by other fishers to get to some remote spots. Well that sort of confirms that it's a game trail, not a people trail, but we're sort of committed now. It was obvious that whatever had been making this track had been going under this log and didn't have to climb over it like I did. But we were committed to getting to the fishing spot that I had seen passing this way in my boat. The water's a long way down. I'm not sure what elevation we've got here. Maybe 60 or 70 metres. So, I'll go a little bit further, but I reckon we might be turning back the way this is going. That's an issue. That is definitely an issue. Behind me is a cliff straight down. So this definitely isn't the way we were supposed to be going. We might have to backtrack a little bit and see if we can find a way down. Because uh, that's about a 12 metre drop and that's too far for me to jump. Especially with all this gear. But there is a game trail here. She's bloody steep. But I'm thinking if I follow this game trail down, have a fish. The tide might be down low enough to walk back the original track that we planned on walking. Just gotta get down there. With that dying, but <laughs> you know, a bit of an adventure. Whew. I'm not sure what sort of animal made this track, but it's too steep for me to walk. I am sort of sliding sideways down, but that doesn't work out that well. Well, the GoPro didn't like that one bit. It only made it a few meters. But I have made it all the way down, so, or almost. So, I think it's destroyed the battery in the GoPro because it was charged now, I reckon it's nearly flat. Well, there should be a few more in my bag. If not, we've always got a phone. You guys are in for the long haul, so am I. 
Here are these rocks up here ahead. I can see them. Finally. <laughs> the elbow's just there. It's only about 40 metres away. Oh. oh well. It's all part of the adventure. The journey is 90% of it, is that what they say? I don't know. Let's set up and get some lines in though. And get some water back in these mullet. I think I lost pretty much all of it. Hopefully the fish are biting. The vest, some people have questions about the vest. It's handy because it's got pockets and also it sort of hides and stops things getting caught on the GoPro mount. So, yeah, sometimes I wear a vest. Right, I've got me lines in. I've got two here, one with bait, one with a float, and one up this way with a float on it. I don't know if you can see it, it's sort of cruising along. The mullet get in the car and they sort of swing around back into the bank where the line pulls tension. But the sand flies are absolutely hammering me. And I can either go back to the car, up the mountain, or swim at the moment, so I think I might try and light a little fire. Uh, because I'm losing a lot of blood here to sand flies. I didn't think they were going to be this bad. It's been cold. I thought it might have killed them off for the winter, but no, they're here. So let's see if we can get a little fire going while we wait for a bite. And that bite didn't take very long at all. As I was gathering some firewood, a little cod decided to hit a mullet on a float. And now he tries to hide under a rock. It's a bit late, mate. <laughs> get out from under the ledge. I was over here trying to get the fire going and I heard a rod. It was a big hit. Or a little fish. <laughs> Check that out. Oh. Check that absolute weapon out. I don't know if we got that on film or not. Be annoying if it wasn't because I was holding it in my mouth. That is a monster grunner. Just got him too. Now we've got to do this quick because I've got a cod on the other line still. We've got to go get him back in the water. Oh, oh man, lucky these cod are tough as, we'll be able to get him back. Alright, did we get the hook out of your button? Well that other line went crazy. Little cod, I want to short change him, still a great catch. A bit on the small side, but it's all for a bit of fun. Release him. Oh, 
Oh, bit of a rough release, but he's good. Oh, Scrana's trying to get back towards the water. I know it can be hard to tell on film how big, oh no, my rod, how big a fish is, but uh, he's about this big. We'll get a better shot of him when I get the camera down, but I reckon that's gotta be 55. You're getting close to 60. Awesome catch, super stoked about that. Let's get this hook out of him, get him cleaned up, and have a proper look and we'll have a measure. Oh, I'm so stoked about that, guys. Well worth the trip down the mountain. This grunt will put up a valiant fight, but by the time I grabbed the rod, he'd nearly spooled me. So I was lucky to get him in, that's for sure. Coming in at 59 centimetres. This monster grunt is coming in just under 600. Now, obviously I don't have a cooler or anything, but I would like to take this guy back to the family. We love eating grunt, it's a good eating fish, especially ones this size. So, Probably gonna have to neck him and put him on a stringer because I don't have anything to keep him cool. He'll stay good in the water for a couple of hours and I think that's what we're gonna do. So we'll get him done and get him on a stringer and we'll get these rods back in. See if we can pick up any more fish because we can't get out. We've got to wait for the tide. I can't climb back up that mountain. It's just too steep. So, yeah, cracker fish, absolute cracker fish. Awesome. That was an awesome grunner. I've got the lines back in now. I've taken the float off one and thrown it up here where we caught that cod, I think. Well, probably just gonna get snagged up with cod, but super thankful for that fish anyway. I've got it on the stringer there. I've cut its neck, so it's not suffering at all. But uh, it'll be good there for an hour or two in this sort of weather. And then we're gonna start the trek out and race it home and get it on some ice because that is dinner tonight. I am out here for the experience, but at the core of it, we're out here to get food for our family. That's why most of us fish. It's a bit of an adventure and it's great to get outdoors, but what it boils down to is meat on the table for our families, or it is for me anyway. So, thanks Grana. You're gonna be dinner tonight. Maybe yeah. we'll catch a few more fish, maybe we won't, but oh, that's just made my day. All the way through that excitement, the sand flies were relentlessly biting me. So without any further ado, it was time to get that fire going and smoke these guys out. getting back out that way what I have noticed walking around here just with me little camp set up is I think there's tons of bandicoots there's lots of holes little lots of holes dug out in the embankments this is a bigger one here but they're all over the place you wouldn't want rocks come tumbling down there would you so there's been heaps of bandicoots here, I reckon. Or it could be something else that digs. Let me know in the comments if you know what you think it might be. That fire I've got up there has done the absolute trick on keeping the sand flies away. They were really hammered at me and now I'm not getting bit at all. So make sure you build it upwind and check to make sure you're allowed to build fires wherever you're fishing. And remember to put it out. Looks like bar tail, I only have to be 30, so I'd say this guy's well in. Oh, unfortunately, this guy's followed the hook, so if he is legal, which I think he will be, we'll take him home because 
he's really swallowed that bad. He's bleeding quite a lot. So let's quickly size him up, and if he's legal, we'll dispatch him and take him home. Right, so as you can see, that guy's well and truly over the 30 centimetres. I'm pretty sure they got a bee. And you would have seen that foamy blood on him. That means he's probably punched it along or something like that, whatever fish he got. Means he's not in with a real good chance of survival. So we'll dispatch him, put him on the stringer with the grunner and we'll get out of here. Actually, we need to find a track out. I can't get back up the mountain with these fish. All right, all work to do. Being at the rock that is Devil's Elbow is right there. I decide my best chances is gonna to be to cut through the bush over to the original track in. But I haven't walked this track before. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be easy for me. Covered in spiders, scratches, you name it, I've got it. So I'm leaving my bag and my bucket, taking the rods, because anyone who's anyone who's walked with rods knows they're a pain in the ass. Oh, how am I gonna get back up that? As you can see, this track isn't much better than the one I came in on. What's in the hole? It's certainly very steep and overgrown. But eventually, we made it to the picnic area with the rods, turned right on around, and hiked back through this ravine to collect the bucket and bag. Right, oh, legends. That was by far one of the hardest walks I've ever had to do to get in or out of a spot. Whew. I'm really thankful for the fish we caught and for you guys staying tuned all the way to the end. Makes a heap of difference and I wouldn't be doing this sort of stuff without you guys. So thanks a lot. Was it worth it? I don't know. I'll let you guys decide. Always got to come back and get the camera.